Tandy 1000 was a line of IBM PC compatible computers produced by Tandy Radio Shack and was aimed at the home market. It was actually originally a clone of IBM's failed PC Junior, but it took basically everything that the PC Junior did right, like the enhanced graphics and sound, and didn't do anything that the PC Junior did wrong. Like the non-standard ports, terrible keyboard, and high price tag. And unlike the PC Junior, it was quite a success, and they made it for many years. In this video, I'm not as much going to talk about the history of the Tandy 1000. There are lots of other great videos about that. But I like to just go through all the different models of Tandy 1000 that were made over the years. So, starting with the original 1984 Tandy 1000. It was based around a 4.77 MHz Intel 8088, came with 128K of RAM, had a single 360K 5.25 inch disk drive, and an optional second disk drive, and it sold for $1199, which was quite a bit more affordable than the PC Junior. In 1987, the Tandy 1000 got an upgrade. We got the Tandy 1000 SX, which had a 7.16 MHz 8088 384K of RAM, uh, two 5.25 inch 360K disk drives, and it also came with eight expansion slots instead of the original 1000's three. It was a bit of a criticism that the original 1000 only had three expansion slots, but you don't really need many because the 1000 was pretty integrated. And the 1000 SX sold for $1199, just like its predecessor. That same year, Tandy brought out the Tandy 1000 EX, which was an all-in-one model. It had a built-in 5.25 inch floppy drive in the side, similar to an Apple IIc, Amiga 500, or Atari ST of the time. It had the same 7.16 It had 256k of RAM, and had non-standard expansion slots, and it sold for $799, making it one of the most affordable IBM compatible computers on the market at that time. In 1988, Tandy Radio Shack followed up the EX with the HX, which is similar to the EX, except it had a three and a half inch floppy drive in the front. It had this really cool thing where it could boot MS-DOS, BASIC, and DeskMate from ROM, so you wouldn't need to insert a disk first. Super handy, or should I say handy Tandy. The HX only sold for $699, which was $100 less than what the uh, EX originally sold for. The 1000 HX went on to become the most popular model of Tandy 1000, and it's easy to see why. Also in 1988, we got the TX model, which is Tandy's first 286 base computer, that's 640k of RAM, the single 720k 3.5 inch disk drive. The TX sold for $1199. It was pretty short lived because it was replaced only a year or so after, in 1989, by the TX. TL. The TL was based around the same 8 MHz 286 processor and had the same 640K of RAM, except the TL had DOS, DeskMate, BASIC, and ROM, similar to the HX. Had an enhanced sound chip that allows you to record and play back digital samples, which was pretty cool for the time. And it also supported Hercules monochrome graphics, which was pretty interesting. TL sold for $1299. So it was one of the more expensive Tandy 1000 models. Released that same year, we had the Tandy 1000 SL. It had an 8086 CPU, 384K of RAM. It only had a 5 and a quarter inch 360K drive. Also had DeskMate, BASIC, and DOS in ROM. The same enhanced sound, and it was also Hercules compatible. But the SL only cost $899. Moving on to 1990, we get the uh, TL2. Based around a 286 CPU, 640K of RAM, 720K 3.5 inch floppy drive, similar to the earlier TL. It also had the same DeskMate, DOS and whatnot in ROM, same enhanced sound, Hercules compatible. But this one had high resolution Tandy graphics, which allowed it to display 640 by 480 at 16 colors, and was also compatible with smart drive peripherals. This one also sold for $1299. In 1991, Tandy Radio Shack released the final Tandy 1000 to be 100% Tandy 1000 compatible. And what does that mean? Well, they still brought out a couple more models after the RL in 92 and 93, but they weren't 100% compatible with the Tandy slash PC Junior graphics and sound standards. The RL was the last model to have the Tandy graphics and sound. The RL released in 1991 had an 8086 CPU, 512K of RAM, 720K 3.5 inch floppy drive, had the enhanced sound, Hercules compatible, high resolution, and it had an optional hard drive, the RL HD, and this sold for $599. 1992 we got the RLX, which had a 10 MHz 286, 512K of RAM, 720K 3.5 inch floppy drive, had the enhanced sound, optional hard drive, but it had VGA graphics, so it wasn't compatible with the Tandy graphics, sold for $799. 
1993, we got the final Tandy 1000 model, the RSX, had a 386 SX CPU at 25 megahertz, one megabyte of RAM, a three and a half inch 1.44 megabyte floppy drive, and had optional hard drive. This one was VGA compatible, again, not compatible with the Tandy graphics, and actually had an optional SVGA upgrade. Whew, that was a lot. Anyway, that's about it for the Tandy 1000 line. I really do like the Tandy 1000s. I would love to get my hands on one one of these days. But uh, anyway, uh, hope you found this video maybe a little bit interesting, educational, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day.